This is Ronald with Win911 and thank you for joining us for our next installation of our how to instructional video series. This is video number 11 and we're going to cover in touch configuration and getting that set up. I've got Brian here to walk us through this and Brian, it's all yours. Teach us everything you know. All right, well, welcome to the tutorial for how to set up your in touch connection with Win911 so software. Uh, today we're going to be working with version 17. Point, uh, 14.12. Um, so let's first head over to where our InTouch module is installed at. It's under Alarming. And then you'll see here it's under InTouch. And just like with our other tutorial videos, we're going to be doing a left to right sweep of these four tabs right here. Today we have subscriptions, applications, tags, and import. Uh, let's first look at subscriptions, which will allow us to filter our incoming alarms and basically ask for which ones you want to pay attention to. You'll notice right off the bat we have a default subscription. This will automatically um, allow every alarm that InTouch triggers to come through and for when 911 to alarm you based off those. But let's actually start by creating our own here. And you'll see in general we have three different aspects that when 911 allows you to alarm upon. Tag names, groups, and priorities. So first we'll take a look at tag names and we'll see a drop down that is very similar to the rest of um, the subscriptions where we have a wildcard regular expression contains and does not contain. First we'll start off with a wildcard. These are pretty simple. They allow us to catch any alarm or tag that has a certain word in it. So let's say our word will be pump. This will allow us to catch any alarm that has the uh, word keyword pump in it with any other strings surrounding it. Um, we don't need that one. Accidentally hit plus. Plus will actually allow you to add a new tag name alarm. Let's say we don't want it to be wildcard this time, we want it to be a regular expression. Um, not everyone has experience with regular expressions and that's okay. There's plenty of tutorials online how to do it. But it basically allows you to format more complex strings that you're looking for inside your alarm or tag names. Um, contains um, allows you to specify a certain thing that the name might contain. And does not contain, of course, is the opposite of that. So let's... Um, Let's say that we want anything that has the word pump and contains the word high. Maybe we're looking to see if we can grab uh, tag names about pumps with a uh, high value or high priority to them, depending on however you want to specify your tag names within InTouch. InTouch also allows us to specify groups, and therefore in Win911 we can filter based off of groups. Um, Let's just go with a, another wildcard here, and we'll say we're looking for things that are in group one. Um, okay, and then lastly, we have priority ranges. Uh, you can either pick a range at which um, the alarm will fall under. These, of course, are specified in InTouch again, but we set our range here to reflect those ranges in InTouch allowing us to essentially filter out anything that falls outside of these ranges. So let's say we're looking for um, a tag name with pump in the name and high. It's in group one and let's say we're only concerned about the highest of high alarms. Let's say the priority range is between 900 and 999. And so of course we can go up here and we can name it. You do need to name it but I thought we would set it up first before you decided what your name would be. And we'll call this um, high priority group zero pump. And there we have a subscription for you. Last thing that we have here, uh, we can add some labels to this. And labels just form a way for us to categorize our subscriptions. And you'll see as we go through the tutorial, we can add labels to all sorts of things to help you stay organized. These are some preloaded labels that Win91 kind of gives you almost as a way to um, get you started using labels. Um, 
So let's say area XYZ, you can imagine if we went over, click this arrow right here, it actually navigates us to our labels workspace. And you could imagine that we could pick a name, let's say uh, group 001, and we'll leave those default colors. Then you can navigate back and say, actually area XYZ isn't quite accurate. Let's label this with the group 001. That way, whenever you see alarms for the subscription coming through, especially using our reporting module, which you can find a tutorial for as well, uh, it will allow you to keep these alarms coming through this particular subscription well organized. Uh, lastly here, just click on the save icon and you'll see that our high priority group one pump is sitting right over here ready to be used. Um, but before that can take place, um, let's move over to our applications. And this is going to allow us to um, this is going to allow us to specify our in touch platform that Win911 will be um, connecting to. So let's go ahead and hit the plus here. And we have three tabs here that we're going to go through one by one. Uh, name for our application. This is going to need to be the exact name of your in touch application. And so I think that's a good point to come over here and let's open up in touch so we can kind of see maybe some ways to determine the characteristics that we need to plug into our Win911 configuration. Um, these are some standard demo applications loaded in for in touch whenever you install the product. I happen to be playing with this one here, so we can go ahead and use that. If you have a brand new copy of InTouch, you might actually have these very same demo products. This could be extremely useful. Uh, first things first, I just want to know the name of this uh, project. And it is demo app one underscore 1028. You can see that, or 1280, excuse me. Uh, you can see that right there. Hey, Brian, quick question for you. Sure. Could you have picked a name that's any longer? Oh, <laughs> well, like I said, these were just the preloaded apps that came with InTouch, and I guess maybe I was feeling a little lazy and didn't want to rename that. Um, now, for our node name, this is basically going to be the machine that the application is loaded on. Um, you can use our browse feature right here to browse for that node, as we call it here. Um, but since I know this is, happens to be loaded locally on my machine, which might be the case for you as well, I can specify local host here and that will connect me to my current running machine that has InTouch loaded onto it. You could also of course put your IP address here or the name that you've given your computer or the name of a computer that you know the InTouch application is running on or of course you can browse for it. Um, so let's go ahead and save that up, and you can see it over here, but uh, we do need to go back and talk about a few more of these tabs. Next one over, we have uh, watchdogs. So watchdogs are a feature that Win911 developed in order to allow you to monitor the health or connectivity of your uh, connection to InTouch. So the way we accomplish that is we have an alarm uh, that is specified in InTouch that we connect to. And we will send an alarm not whenever this alarm goes off, but rather when this alarm stops going off. Basically, this watchdog will wait for a heartbeat, is how we often refer to it, from an alarm that goes off, say, every few seconds. Uh, this could just be a clock. A lot of people use a clock, and every time it ticks, you set a value that says set off an alarm every time this value changes. Well, of course, the clock keeps on ticking away and you'll receive a, uh, an alarm every one second. And as long as we're seeing those alarms, we know that we are connected and good to go. Um, if we stop seeing them, then we know there's a connectivity issue and that's when this watchdog will be activated and send you a notification. So let's, uh, let's name this. We'll call it Heartbeat. It's a nice name. Description. Um, we'll just say, are we connected? Uh, tag name. Um, we could go over to InTouch and take a look at our tags, but we're actually going to be doing that in the next section. Let's just assume we have a tag called clock. And here we go, we go timeout. So generally, 
there can be hiccups in connections, uh, maybe either from InTouch or maybe your connectivity on your network. So a timeout much lower than 90 seconds isn't generally suggested. I could say going 60 seconds wouldn't be too bad, but in general we default to 90 because it's a pretty safe bet that that is a, um, a good timeout period. Um, next we set a strategy. I, we've had our section on strategies covered before. Um, as you see here, I have a strategy I call notify floor, you know, as if we have um, floor directors that would need to know if the connectivity was lost. And then we can pick our severity for it, just to kind of give an indication of how big a deal this is. Uh, let's say that this is connected to our nuclear reactor, so we're going to put that at the highest priority that we possibly can. And for a label, once again, let's say this one's a safety label because we need to stay connected so we stay um, alarming. So we can save that up, and now we have a watchdog defined for this application that we're connected to. And then one more thing about watchdogs we might want to mention is that, of course, you can have multiple watchdogs. And one of the benefits of this is, is you can have it connected to, say, different PLCs. Um, and that will allow you to monitor the life and connectivity of different products. That way you have a better grasp of what's going on um, in the production and determining if and when certain devices go down and exactly which devices those are. Uh, so we don't really want to add another one though. Okay, so let's head on over to our tags workspace and this is where we really start defining the um, the way InTouch is going to be communicating with Win911. InTouch supports tags and these come in a variety of different forms and right off the bat when you see that we are adding a tag to Win911 it's asking us what type of tag we're going to be dealing with. Um, we're going to go with analog right here. In fact I'll show you why we're going to go with analog. So let's go back over to our InTouch application and a good way to keep an eye on which tags you have in your application. We can come down here under tools to the tag name dictionary, double click on that, and we're concerned about the details and alarms of these tags. And there's a couple that I happen to know I'm looking for right now. This is our reactor going on. Um, let's take a look at the reactor temperature. Here we go, reactor level, reactor temp, that's the one right here. So we selected that, we can now see it, and now we see a few things about it. It has an initial value of 60, has a maximum value, and here we go, what we're looking for right here is the alarms associated with it. InTouch allows you to specify level alarms of low, 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 high, and high, high. It also allows you to specify deviation of alarms of minor and major deviations, and also rate of change alarms. So we'll keep in mind that for this certain um, tag, reactor temp, we have a high and a high, high alarm and nothing else to worry about. So with that in mind, we can go back to our um, Win911 configuration. Oh, excuse me. We also know that reactor temp has values of real, memory real. Um, this is kind of a term you may not know, but a real is a analog type, meaning it can take any value in between uh, 0 and 222. There are of course other types of values, integers, and uh, there's analog as well, but for reals, which a lot of your values will probably be, we select analog here. So now we have an analog tag, and let's tell Win911 about the tag that we want to monitor coming from InTouch. So the friendly name, this is just a name that we can uh, recognize it by, that is just a nice label for it. So we're going to call this reactor temperature. And the tag name exactly as it appears in InTouch. So that was react temp. The application right here, uh, it fills in automatically for us, but let's say you had multiple InTouch applications for whatever reason. You could select this drop down right here and you could choose from them. Or if you find yourself making a tag name and your application isn't in the drop down, take this arrow right over to our uh, applications workspace and feel free to make a new application that the tag exists in. Once again we got some labels here. Uh, let's keep calling safety because it is important our reactors temperature. And now we have the basic configuration of our tag setup. 
you'll see here we have three different tabs for our level alarm, rate of change, and deviation. We know that the um, rate of change and deviation alarms don't exist within this reactor temp tag, but we can take a look at them anyway to just see what exactly we would need. Really, all we're going to need here for the rate of change is a strategy to accomplish whenever we see that alarm go off, and once in a description that we can override the default description with, and some labels once again. Very similar for our deviation, except now we have a major deviation alarm to describe using a description and labels, as well as a minor deviation alarm to describe using description and labels. But for now, since those do not exist for this tag, we will go here and disable each one of these and head over to our level alarm. Let's go ahead and pick a strategy for us. We'll just say we want to notify, notify our floor managers. Um, and then we have our high high and high alarms to make. As you remember, there aren't any low or low low alarms for our reactor temperature. That being said, we don't need to go through and disable these alarms by any means. It's just they will never be triggered because InTouch doesn't have the ability to trigger them at the moment. So for our high high alarm, we can add a description. This description will override any description actually associated in the InTouch library. So for instance, I believe this comment would then be commented out or replaced with the description that we give. But we'll do that. It's not a very helpful comment anyway. We can say um, something more useful, more defined. How about we say temperature over 220? No, excuse me, temperature over 180 which is our high, high indicator. So we can go here, temperature over 180. And for our high alarm, let's see, what was it? 100. We can say temperature over 100. That way it gives us a nice indication of what this alarm corresponds to. Uh, let's add our group one to this to each one of these. You'll notice that in this dropdown, we did not have access to the safety label. You can see here only these three labels exist. No safety label, the one we've been using before to indicate that this was a matter of safety. And that's because that label is automatically inherited from this tag tab that we did before. So. Any label that we put here for the main upfront description of this tag then gets carried down to each one of these alarms that exist within that tag. So of course we could say add uh, building 2 and then if we go back here you'll notice that building 2 is no longer part of the options for us to choose because it's already associated with it. We can go ahead and save that up and we'll see over here we have a tag with reactor temperature, the friendly name we gave to it, that's easy, as for, easy for us to identify, and the type of um, tag it is, analog, because the values of the temperature range in, in any value between the set values they're allowed to. Now setting up all these tags can be a little tedious, and if you have a large in-touch project, then it could also take a very long time. So we've actually added one last feature to the in-touch workspace and that is the import feature. This is going to allow us to import the tags from our InTouch application. Uh, first we have a little disclaimer here. Subscriptions provide a more convenient method of alarm configuration than importing tags. Tag definitions are only required for report functionality or advanced text-to-speech scenarios. This is basically saying that while tags are very nice and they are a specific way of identifying what's going on in your InTouch application, our subscriptions workspace, which allows you to say, uh, like we'd shown earlier, filter out tags and only get ones that specify a certain quality, are nice because if let's say you add another tag or alarm to this high priority group one pump, that alarm is going to immediately start coming through under this subscription right here. However, if you have no subscriptions and only use tags, and you add another tag to InTouch, that means you're going to need to come back to Win911 and add that tag in here as well. So um, different, different ways to go about accomplishing the same thing, whatever is most convenient for you. But we understand, and we'll move on to the next step. 
Right here, we need to select the application that we want to import tags into, and then we're also going to need to select a CSV file that is created using a database dump from InTouch. Now, um, I've already done that, and I happen to know where that file is, so you click on this little arrow right here, and I believe they go to the same spot um, each time the um, application dumps these files unless you change the defaults. So the default location for me was in my program data under my C drive, um, in touch demos which is kind of the name of the folder which these demos exist in, demo app, uh, this is the name you'll notice of the, the application and right here db.csv. So we go ahead and open that up. It's going to look through it and parse it and kind of determine what tags are in it and as you'll see here the file I uploaded contained 28 tags. One of them is already defined in the application. Um, if I want to re-import them, I need to delete them first. And if not, I can continue on and import from the remaining 27 tags. So I'm happy with the tag I already set up. And we can take a look at this real quick. These are the tag names of all the tags that I found within the application. Uh, the types, analog or discrete, or message, which were those three types that we were allowed to pick from when defining something directly in the tag workspace. Groups, which we talked about in the subscription workspace. You can kind of determine those right here. And the number of alarms associated with each of these tags. So as you can see, not all of these tags have alarms associated with them. And that's for use uh, in various ways within the InTouch application. But for us, you might really be more concerned with the uh, tags that actually have alarms associated with them. And in particular, I'm going to go with reactor level. If you were to click this um, add all button right here, you'll see that all the tags get moved over from the available tags to the tags to import section. You can click the uh, move back all button in order to move them all back. And we're going to be concerned about this reactor level. Um, tag. So we highlight it, click the add button, it moves over to the tags to import section. You also notice once again we have a spot to add labels. This is going to add a label to the tag of what we're importing. Let's go with safety again. We hit next. And now we see the alarms which exist on reactor level. Uh, this one only has one alarm and that is a level alarm for reactor level. We can go ahead and select it, move it over as well. We'll see that the safety labels associated with it. And just like our other labels, we can then say you're part of group one. And this is going to allow us to associate the group one label with the particular alarm within the tag name. So we're happy with that. We hit next. And it is now loading the tags into our tags workspace. Um, Everything seems to have gone well. You can click Finish. Now when we go back to our Tags workspace, we'll see right here, Reactor Level, Analog Tag. The name, you'll notice, is since it's a friendly name, we kind of have a default friendly name that we put in there for you. Uh, the name of the application, and then the name of the tag name. Of course, if you don't like this, we can go back and we can change it to Reactor Level to match our other tag. And we have a nice, it looks nice, nicely formatted. Um, there we are. Looks very good. OK, so our setup is now complete. We have two tags and a subscription for um, a group that we might need to create in the future because uh, the, this group isn't, doesn't really exist yet. But we can still test to see that these two tags that we created work nicely with the um, InTouch alarming system. So to do that, there is one more thing we need to consider about the Win911 configuration, and that is for InTouch to work, we are going to need to launch a runtime application. This can be found um, in the same folder that you find Win911 configuration. You'll see it right here, Win911 InTouch. Just click on that. And you'll notice down here in your tray, um, we have the Win911 InTouch application. You can right click on this and exit whenever you like. Um, but this is going to allow 
when 911 to communicate with InTouch. Lastly, since uh, we don't have anyone to receive these notifications, we can use our trusty Win911 log viewer. And this allows us to see basically the status of the system and any alarms going on at the moment. So we'll start this up and have it ready to start displaying what alarms are happening. Go back to our InTouch app. This uh, preset demo app is very nice, and all you have to do is hit runtime, and it should open right up and alarm should start being triggered. As you'll see right here, uh, we have a level alarm for our reactor. And it was started at the low level. As you can see, it was below 200, and pretty soon it's going to rise, rise, rise above to the um, high level, and that should trigger an alarm for us. Temperature will get there soon as well. Here we go, we see that there's an alarm triggered in InTouch. Now we just need to make sure that in our log viewer that alarm comes through as well. And we'll just give it a second to travel over the network. Here we go. So actually, we saw both our temperature alarm and our uh, level alarm. Hey, and we even got our watchdog alarm because we stopped receiving a notification for that watchdog. We can go back if you remember correctly. This is our watchdog. So. This is because, of course, there was no alarm called clock, as I told you earlier. So it waited 90 seconds and said, hey, I'm not getting an alarm from anything called clock. There must be a connectivity issue. So you do want to make sure this watchdog is set up correctly. We can act from our log viewer. No need for a comment. And that watchdog will be quite noisy here in the future. But that shows that our InTouch application is set up correctly. We have everything working well. And that will complete our tutorial on how to set up the InTouch configuration. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us via phone or via email. We are here to help. Uh, there's more videos to come. And again, anything you need, get a hold of us. Thanks for tuning in.